Hey guys, Micah from Black Bear Custom Kydex. I just shot a video showing these two systems as well as a quick rundown on this. And uh, I'm shooting this separate video so I can give you guys a more in-depth look at this sheath, which I would dare say is possibly the most frustrating and complicated uh, intricate sheath that I've built yet. There's so much going on with this thing and uh, everything just kind of required its own custom fitting and um, it was a real struggle to, to, to work with it. But we have a nice finished product here and I'd really like to show it to you. So um, check out the other video if you want to see the Azula sheath and this Ontario Spec Plus machete. All right, so what we have going on here, um, the primary sheath, oh, these are going to uh, Richard and Albion, Indiana or Illinois. Sorry, Richard. <laughs> I immediately shot this video after the other one where I said the same thing and didn't bother to look. So here we are once again. All right, so we've got the Steel Eagle 107C. This is a Charlie class. We've got a Benchmade Hidden Canyon Hunter. And then a pile of accessories. So we're going to go through them one by one. Um, first things first, the colors that you see here are flat black and moss gray, M-A-S gray. Um, it's a popular military camo color. Um, so anyway, a lot of people ask for it. I think it's a cool color. It's kind of like a, it's like a gray with a little bit of like a sea green in it or something. There's a very light hint of green and tan in the gray as well. So it's a really nice color. Um, all right, so let me gather my bearings real quick. He asked for a pile of accessories on this sheath. Um, this is a concept that I know a lot of guys are big fans of, and some are um, really not fan of because of the weight, uh, because of the complexity, maybe even the look of it. It's a little bit modern looking, um, so you lose that kind of rustic nature feel uh, to having all your stuff set up like this. However, I would say the benefits for me anyway, kind of outweigh the, the not risks, but the negatives on it. I don't care about the, about the weight. If I'm having this much gear on me, I'm having this much gear on me anyway. So I might as well have a nice way to carry it. Kydex is not particularly heavy material. Um, when you start using a lot of it on a system, the, uh, the weight obviously adds up and the hardware adds up, but I would say there is probably like, I don't know, six ounces worth of Kydex and hardware on this sheet there's it's just not that much so if you're going to be doing some like you know serious Appalachian trail hiking and you're like really dead set on minimizing the weight to the ounce then maybe something like this would be a bad idea for you but for all the rest of us Joe Schmoes I think this is a really great way to carry all of your gear in one compact setup obviously um having it accessible is the the advantage that this offers over throwing it all in a bag um, so how this is going to carry is on two molly locks. I'm going to put two Gen 3 large molly locks on the back here. It'll go through this row of screws as well as this row here. Um, the reason I don't have them attached is because I actually uh, didn't realize I was that low on mollies and I just shipped a system out earlier in the week that used up my last pair of them. So I've got another pair coming. Should be here tomorrow. So I'll have this sucker in the mail straight away. Um, so unfortunately, I don't have the mollies attached for the video. Um, but that's how it's going to carry. It's a right-hand draw on the mollies. You can obviously have it inverted or upright. It doesn't really matter either way. Nothing on this system is going to fall out on its own. Um, it is a heavy knife, though, this, uh, this Steel Eagle. So I personally would not carry it inverted just in case you were to take a good spill or something or you know jump off, whatever. And enough of a jolt can definitely dislodge this. Um, although it does have very good retention, so I, I just wouldn't risk it. That's a, that's a heavy hunk of steel to have flying around near, near your, uh, Achilles tendon or something if you're carrying this on a pack. So, all right, we've got this, um, carrying on the mollies. We have on the front here, this SEAH1 arrowhead, and you can see I've just kind of mounted it to the front of the, uh, of the bench made. I think this was the best option for a low profile carry. Um, getting it in a position where I can make the, the holder for it look nice and stylish um, and not obscure other parts of the sheath. I didn't want to put anything over 
you know, this plate here, which kind of accentuates the, the shape of the uh, Steel Eagle. So it was a little bit of a puzzle to figure out exactly what piece was going to go where. And I think um, the original request he'd had was for the ferro rod to be, well, actually, let me, let me tell you, based on the emails. <clears throat> All right, so originally the ferro rod was supposed to go on the back. Um, the compass and the Altoid tin were supposed to go on the back. I did get the compass and the Altoid tin on the back. As you can see, there's the compass. There's the Altoid tin. Um, but putting the ferro rod on the back just wasn't quite feasible. I, I guess the only other place I could have done it would have been to put it kind of parallel to the Lansky. But I didn't like how that looked, and it doesn't feel particularly accessible. So... Function over all is the number one thing that I'm going for with these types of sheaths. Got to make sure, you know, it's easy enough to put a bunch of stuff on a sheath, but to have it positioned so that it's actually accessible and functional is a whole other story. Um, all right, so we've got, sorry, this carabiner. I'm just, currently I'm tucking it behind the Altoid tin to keep it from flopping around. Honestly, I would just remove it altogether uh, if this were my sheath, but. It does tuck pretty nice low profile away there. So uh, in case you're looking for a way to, to stow that if you want to keep it all together. All right, so we have uh, the AH-1 there. The ferro rod, this Exotac fire rod, I've attached to the bottom of the Hidden Canyon Hunter. And I'm using a gray paracord that doesn't quite perfectly match the moss gray, but I think it looks really nice in there. And it goes well with both of the knives handles. Um, so this fire rod is a little bit tight in its holder, but sort of naturally what I go to with uh, with brand new rods, you want them tight in the holder at first because as you use that rod, it's going to shrink down and eventually becomes loose in that holder. And at that point, the shock cord becomes 100% necessary to retain that rod. So I just, obviously you got it on there to start with. All right, so we got the shock cord. Um, we have a Surefire Titan. And this is a twist cap flashlight, so you just twist it to turn that light on, untwist it to turn it off. And even though this is not a Baldrick setup, it's going to be on Molly's, um, I positioned it here with the purpose that if for whatever reason someday this sheath gets converted to a Baldrick system, or um, you know maybe even carrying it inverted, if you wanted some light to be usable on your path, you can actually turn that light while it's in the holder, like you see there. And particularly if it's Baldrick, you can wear it on the sling and use the light while it's attached to your flash or to your uh, to your sheath. So you're just using the whole the whole sheath as basically a giant flashlight, which is really convenient because it frees up both of your hands to be able to use your knives if you need to out in the brush. So I, I like that design a lot. Uh, something that I thought up a while back when I did a sheath for uh, my good buddy BJ Hill. And uh, since then, everybody's kind of seen the utility in that and, and been requesting something similar. So I try to put flashlights on big systems exactly like this unless otherwise requested. Um, so, all right. Then on the back here, well, actually on the top, we've got this Lansky LCD-02. You can see that it does come, just barely comes in contact with the thumb ramp of the Steel Eagle. So <clears throat> it's necessary for it to draw out the bottom toward the tip of the sheath. Um, just because the blades here are actually wider than the rest of it. So they function as a stopper on this holder. So you actually can't, well, I shouldn't say can't. Let's find out. All right, you can put it in this way, but you can see that it's at an angle, so there's going to be a lot of friction. This textured, um, this textured casting is going to put some really serious scratches into the thumb ramp. It's not going to ruin it or anything, but it will definitely leave uh, an aesthetic scar. So I would just keep it with the blades and the wider section toward the tip of the knife and put it in like so. Um, it is a pretty tight holder on there. With anything that's a, you know, a cylinder that's going to be held on the sheath, especially if it's pulling out the bottom, I always make it tight enough so that this isn't just going to fall out on its own. There's no good way to attach shock cord to this system, so there's no shock cord on it. It's just hanging free, but uh, but it is 
pretty it's pretty snug in there so I don't think you're gonna have any issues um, all right moving over to the Altoid tin holder this guy is really simple to use remember that the molly locks are gonna be set up here so you're gonna have to push this out the bottom as well what I would do is just use my thumb well whatever finger you can just use a finger to push that part way out and then grip it from the bottom and pull it the rest of the way so it's nice and easy um, simple it is technically a two-way holder but like I said those molly locks are gonna be in the way so you're gonna have to push it out the bottom and then the last thing we have on here is the uh, the compass itself and the holder for the compass allows it to slide in and out it's in there pretty snug as well so you don't have to worry about it falling out on you however it is uh, it is 100% necessary with compasses on sheaths to be removable so all the compasses you'll see me do on a sheath have the compass removable because there are obviously a lot of metallic elements going on here so if you have this too close to the metal it's going to take an inaccurate reading uh, if the dial is even able to move at all so you need to get this away from the metal take an accurate reading and in case you're wondering these uh, the carabiner and ring there do not affect the reading of the compass so you can have it right up against those no big deal um, putting it back in just as simple as that you can feel it kind of snap into place and I don't know how well it's showing up on camera but you can see there's a little bit of a contour um, I actually flared this just right to get retention on it so you can draw the, the compass in and out but it also kind of snaps into place and feels nice and secure um, like I said with this I would probably personally um, you know maybe cut the cord and just tie it off at this at this ball and let it hang uh, with just that little little tiny length of cord just enough to grip it and pull it out of there I don't really like this uh, ring and carabiner on there however obviously this is not my sheath so um, Richard do what you want with it this is the best way I can think of to kind of keep that uh, carabiner and ring out of the way just tucking it behind that Altoid tin uh, so that works pretty nicely um, all right, one last detail, I guess we have um, we have a plate here. You can see the plate is two layers. Maybe I can get this light to focus a little better on it. I'm not sure I'll be able to. The plate is two layers. It's underneath. It's a 0.125 inch thick black plate, and then we've got the moss gray over the top of it. Uh, I'm pretty sure the moss gray on here is all. I'm pretty sure it's 093, but I can't remember now if I got 093 or 080. It might only have been available in 080, so I'll err on the side of caution. Anyway, you've got a double layer plate here. It's really thick, it's really sturdy, it's riveted all around, and it is screwed into place using these four screws there. So it doesn't want to go anywhere, it doesn't want to shift, it's really, really stuck in place. Um, how this works, or why it's there, is because. <clears throat> The row of eyelets here that the molly lock is going to be attached to go all the way through the sheath, and that's fine. But this row of, of, uh, of uh, drill holes here that the other molly will be attached to um, are directly over the blade itself. So we had to have some kind of plate to float over the top of the blade and give a nice balanced carry with two molly locks. One would probably be okay, but it's not going to feel as secure um, with two, this is just going to lock into place. It's going to be really, really safe and secure on your pack, your vest, whatever, uh, whatever device you've got the molly webbing on that you're going to carry this on. Um, so I really thought it was important to do that, um, that plate setup. I do that most of the time when we, when we uh, have a sheath that needs some molly locks on it. Um, if it happens to be a pancake style sheath that the customers requested, and if that spacing across the blade happens to work with the one and a half inch interval spacing for molly locks then maybe I won't do a plate on it but in cases like this it's really 100% necessary so I see it all the time where sheaths will have two molly locks on it but the molly locks are not spaced with any uh, with any acknowledgement of the one and a half inch um, uh, center to center loops that molly webbing has so if you are missing that spacing, then I'm sorry, but it's actually not going to be compatible with molly webbing. You can be just a little bit off in either direction, 
but it's uh it's a fairly precise thing and and molly with nylon webbing is super durable so it's difficult to move and have it be you know ultra flexible um, this depends a little bit obviously on what it's mounted to and you know all that good stuff but for the most part it's best just to play it super safe and be very precise with your measurements and have molly spaced at one and a half, three, four and a half, six, et cetera, inches, so that you can get it exactly correct for uh, for whatever you're going to be riding this onto. So, all right, guys, I think that's all I got. I'd really love you to uh, comment down below. Let me know what you think of these particular knives, the um, Steel Eagle Delta, sorry, Charlie class, and the Hidden Canyon Hunter from Benchmade. Um, let me know what you think of these accessories. And tell me what you think of having a sheath with all this gear set up on it. Um, I'm a big fan. I don't really do any kind of, uh, I haven't done in a long time, any kind of like, you know, survival expeditionary out in the woods for long periods of time where I need all this stuff. But I think it's a really good concept. And for uh, especially anybody who's actually going out deep woods camping for, you know, more than a couple days at a time, this is all super valuable gear to have on you and to have in one compact system so that uh yeah so you can just access it at any given time but let me know what you guys think pros cons the good the bad the ugly and uh i'd love to see some comments and uh conversations down below all right guys 16 and a half minutes i gotta go i'm so sorry for rambling this long but i really wanted to give you guys a good idea of uh the complexity and just all the different things that went into this it was such a frustrating sheath to work on because you know multiple times i thought i had it figured out and uh, go to put it together and find that you know one thing or the other doesn't quite work perfectly so i had to take the whole thing apart uh reconfigure re you know rethink the whole thing come up with a new custom fitted piece and uh and try that out so it's a little bit of trial and error a little bit of forward thinking but eventually i got it um and uh just to give you an idea simply having all the pieces individually spread out and putting it together even knowing how it's going to go is like a 10 to 15 minute process. So the number of times I have taken this thing apart and put it back together have led me to give Richard some caution. If you want to take anything off of this sheath, be my guest, but uh, make sure you carve out a good chunk of time to do it because it is really complex to get it all apart and put it back together. And it takes a little bit of puzzling. So um, yeah, that's what I got for you guys. Uh, if you like this sheath, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you like the channel, subscribe. Obviously, comment down below. Get those conversations going. And thank you, thank you, thank you for sticking around for 18 minutes of my rambling. I hope you'll tune in for the next one. God bless.